Ah. All right, guys, Doug Lane here, Fast Lane Car Care. Hey, I want to show you uh, real quick how to know if you're dealing with a hydrophobic coating on a window. A lot of times when you're talking about slip solution, you know, you may be in a uh, Facebook group or whatever, asking questions or YouTube comments, uh, you know, trying to dial in your slip, right? Your slip solution ratio to get, you know, a good slip without it tacking up too early or also without it being so slippery that you can't mount it right. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't matter if you've been tending for five minutes or five years, there's going to be somebody out there that says, well, you probably have a hydrophobic coating on your window. So I'm going to show you how to identify a hydrophobic coating. So check this out. So you see this water's bubbled up. Watch. See how it's just beaded up and it's just running down the window. The hydrophobic coating. That's what it does. Could be rain X, could be all kinds of different things. Uh, I noticed this had one on the back window. I didn't use this method, I just used steel wool. But what we have here, squeaky monkey, rewind to raw. It's a hydrophobic coating remover. I'm gonna try to hold it up there and make sure you guys can see. Uh, you get this from Sun Distributing Direct.com. Um, I'm sure you can probably get it other places too. This is what this design is, is designed to do. Now, if you don't have this and you do have a blowtorch, you can torch it off the glass. However, I don't recommend that because um, uh, obviously you're torching inside the window, inside, you know, on the glass. You could hit seals. You could accidentally melt the door panel, all kinds of stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna try to scrub this best we can. Bump down our window a little bit. Get our top edge here. Okay. Let's grab a towel. Now the only downside I see to this stuff is <clears throat> it kind of leaves a residue behind. So like I wouldn't want to just go ahead and spray this window and uh, you know go on tinting. <clears throat> show you, I'll show you different. So we saw how the water beaded up on there. It's not beating like it was. It's I don't know if the camera picks it up, but it's different. You can tell it's different. So what you may want to do, you may want to, uh, you know, clean this with a glass cleaner or whatever. You don't have to, in my opinion, <clears throat> my experience, as long as you don't let this dry, which it says specifically on the instructions, uh, do not use on dry glass or transparent plastics. Um, and also don't let it dry. If you let it dry on the glass, uh, it can, I don't know. I, I honestly, I don't want to say what it could do because I have no idea what would happen if you let it dry entirely. But I noticed, <clears throat> like, if you went around and did all the windows at once and just left it sit, you'll come back and it, it may not be completely dry, but it's starting to dry. And when you do that, you wipe it off, you'll notice it leaves like kind of a residue behind. But what I'm going to do is the uh, same thing I do with any other window after I wipe it down with the towel I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with a squeegee mainly so I can get my edges now we're ready to install got the air conditioner fan on low I got it pointed straight up so it shouldn't give us much dust still kind of playing around with the AC Right now it's not super hot, so I could probably just turn it off while I'm installing, but man, days like yesterday, it was like 95. And this air conditioner, like if it's 80 in here, it's gonna take it a long time to get it down to 70, 75. I just don't have that kind of time. So I like to slide my edge in here, buckle that in the middle, see how that buckled right there where we want it. I want to get this front edge in. <clears throat> now 
Now, for those of you that don't know, if you've never dealt with a hydrophobic coating or anything, basically what it does um, in regards to window tinting, it's gonna keep your slip solution. You can see it's starting to tack down here. You know, we can, you know, our film's not moving. <clears throat> so we didn't get all of it off, but we got enough of it off. One of the tricks you can use is just kind of distribute some of your moisture there. Basically, it's just not, it's not completely wet right there. So, it's gonna cause your film to mount up early. Pretty consistent gap right there. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and, you know, hard pass. Take my little foot, hit this back edge. I'm not gonna go all the way down to here. Okay. I do wanna push down here a little bit. Not all the way down, cause I don't wanna crease it. Two corners set. Get my shank. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I just bumped you off the off the window. Get that tucked in. Did you hear how it kind of crinkled there? It's wet enough, it's you know not an issue, but I'm gonna do this back window and I'll show you uh, what the difference is like if we don't scrub it. So when using this stuff, this hydrophobic coating remover, um, you know, you, you use, you know, do your first application and then if, you know, you might want to spray the window, see what it looks like, how much, if, you know, if it's still beads or whatever, you may do a second, ac second application if you need to. In this case, I knew I could stick this window without it, got 98% of it off. Also worthy of noting, this slip solution is a little bit sticky uh, in comparison to what I would normally run. So that also plays a factor in it too. Normally I would have a little bit more slip to begin with, but um, I don't like opening up my keg all the time. So why it's a little bit slippery, or I should say a little bit dry, a little bit tacky. Um, yesterday, kind of a chilly morning <clears throat> when I mixed this up and plus the air conditioner, I knew it wasn't gonna get over like 72, 73 degrees. Um, so I mixed it a little bit less slippery because, uh, you know, like I just said, we're gonna be running at a lower temperature, so it's not gonna to try to tack up as fast, anything like that. Got one little bowl right there. Got one little spot right here. Now, normally I just leave them sit, but ugh, for the sake of the video, I just give them a few minutes to dry uh, and then come back and hit them. But for the sake of the video, Let's go ahead and lay them down.
everything looks good there. <sighs> now I'll show you guys what it's gonna look like if we don't remove the hydrophobic coating. So what we'll do, just kind of scrub it by hand. You can see the water's just beading right off of it. Sweet. Guess our window switches don't work, on, at least on this door. So, I'm just feeling around here, make sure there's nothing. Oh, okay, it works on the works to go down, doesn't work to go up. Make sure there's nothing on the glass that we need to, you know, sticky anything like that. Yep. Okay. Wipe it down with the towel. Okay. I'm gonna go a little bit extra with the water because I don't feel like doing this window twice. Blow our dust off of it. Come on now. So I'm gonna have to pretty much lay this just about dead on where I want it because it's not gonna let me shift much at all until it's like really difficult. Hopefully you can tell from the video. Very short window. <coughs> now at this point, look at this, it's it's tacked. You can see, you can see it kind of jiggling right here, but I'm not able to slide it one way or the other. Um, if I really, really needed to, I could put a little more force and kind of force it, but you'll run it. You'll, you'll know when you feel it, it like, it like tacks and you can kind of manipulate it, but you're basically like kind of got to break free where the glue stuck. So like all the glue's not adhered. It's just little bits and pieces where where you're hitting little, you know, dry spots, tiny dry spots, basically. So you'll know when you have a hydrophobic coating on, it's probably gonna frustrate you to no end and you're probably gonna be real confused if you've never dealt with it before or you've never seen anybody talk about it or address it or whatever. Once you know that they're there and how to fix them, how to get around them, not really a big deal. Honestly, I went a long time without using the hydrophobic coating remover because um, they just didn't make it at the time or I didn't know about it, one or the other. See how that doesn't want to slide. Takes a little more effort. I just want to sneak it into position there. <clears throat> I would imagine for most things like Rain-X, <clears throat> stuff like that, a scrub pad and some glass cleaner would probably would probably get you by uh, without having to use a torch. I'm just I'm not a big fan of the torch. I think that it certainly has its applications. It has you know it has a place for sure. 
um, just in my business, I'm not under that much pressure to go super, super fast where, you know, in my opinion, the risk of burning a customer's interior, uh, you know, seals and stuff like that, it's just not worth, you know, the couple minutes you save. That's just my opinion, you know. Maybe, maybe in your life, your world, it's different. I'm not high volume. You can see, uh, I'm working out of my home garage now. I used to have a shop. I used to have employees. Um, I used to do a lot of mobile work. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, being high volume is just, in my opinion, higher stress. You know, it is what it is. You got to make sure people actually show up. You know, if you're doing five, six cars a day, you know, that's five or six people you need to be confirming the night before with to make sure they're actually going to show up. If they don't, then you've got to try to go ahead in your schedule and get a hold of those people and try to get them to show up in, you know, in that person's place. And then you've got the whole issue of, you know, do you schedule that person again, especially if they no call, no show? You know, how do you do that? I mean, it's just a lot of stress. This way, it's it's one person. Uh, which, you know, me, so, you know, I don't have to worry about babysitting if something goes wrong, you know, something gets damaged, something gets broken, or quality's just not there. It's not their fault, it's mine. I don't have anybody to blame. <clears throat> you know, working out of my house, uh, very, very, very little overhead, you know, think about them. I'd be paying, you know, basically the same utilities either which way battery low start the vehicle turn it off for a second um, so there you have it guys there's a the difference between a hydrophobic coating uh, and no hydrophobic coating how to identify the two now where do we go from here uh, I'm not gonna leave these streaks some people do all I'm gonna do is hit it with some glass cleaner let it sit for about 15 seconds take my towel and I'm gonna scrub this way uh, generally this is caused by just these panels being excessively dirty which I don't, I don't remember what the mileage was but probably a lot it's an older truck it's a VIN stamp here uh, it's a 2010 so 12 years old she's got some miles on her for sure got some age uh, that's just where these are just clean streaks didn't ruin anything hit it with some glass cleaner wipe it down you're good um, hydrophobic coating you know we dealt with it on this window we didn't clean it or scrub it or anything it turned out fine uh, being a short small window like this it's much easier to kind of lay it where you want it to begin with uh, on a bigger window like that or a back window you're gonna have some issues you're probably gonna want to address that hydrophobic coating but there you go hopefully this helps somebody out uh, see you guys on the next video.